Number one says a bacterial population is tripling every hour. By what factor does the population change after one half hour? Um, so we see the, the growth factor here is tripling. So this is tripling and then our T is our time period. So in this case, we have um, three to the one half power. So we see that down here in D and then three to the one half power is also the same as the square root of three. So both of those are um, equivalent. Number two, a medication has a half-life of four hours after it enters the bloodstream. A nurse administers a dose of 225 milligrams to a patient at noon. Write an expression to represent the amount of medication in milligrams in the patient's body at 1 p.m. on the same day. So this is after one hour. And then remember, we've got um, a half-life here of every four hours. So one hour is one-fourth of a half-life or the amount of hours over the half-life. So when we write our expression of the initial amount times the growth factor of one-half, this is going to be to the one-fourth power, or you could put that as 0.25. Um, but you want to make sure that you convert this exponent using this half lifetime period. So in this next one, um, we want to write it at 7 p.m. So then this is 7 hours, which converts to 7 fourths of a half life. Um, and so then when we put this one in, we'll have the initial population. And then it's being cut in half um, every half you know, fourth of an hour. So then this is going to be seven fourths of a half life. And you could put 1.75 in there too. B, the expression 225 times one half to the five halves represents the amount of medicine in the body after some time. What is that time? So we're focused on this exponent, right? And we have to get this into fourths. Because if it's in fourths, then this is the number of hours. So five halves, we want to write as fourths. So then we'll just multiply um, the bottom by two to get it to be a four. So we'll multiply both top and bottom by two so that we stay equivalent. So then this top is going to be 10 over four. So 10 over four means that this has happened after 10 hours meaning 10 hours after noon, so that means it's going to be 10 p.m. Number three, the number of employees in a company has been growing exponentially um, by 10%, so we're growing by 10% each year. By what factor does the number of employees change for each of the following? So now this is in years. So for a month, we want to think about how much is one month of a year. And so our growth factor here, again, okay, growth factor, we're growing by 10%. So this is going to be um, a growth factor of one plus that rate as a decimal. And 10% as a decimal is 0.1. So our growth factor is 1.1. So this is going to be growing 1.1, and then one month is 1 12th of a year because our time needs to be in years, um, not months. So then here, three months is 3 twelfths of a year. So it's going to be 1.1 to the 3 twelfths. You could obviously also write that as a simplified fraction or a reduced fraction of 1 fourth or the decimal. Um, every 20 months, so 20 months is 20 twelfths of a year. And then again, you could um, simplify that. So both of those divide by four, so then five thirds of a year. Number four, what is um, the value of the truck decreases exponentially after its purchase. Two points on the graph show the truck's initial value. So here's its initial value and then its value a decade later. Express the car's value in dollars as a function of time, D, so we're gonna be using D, and D should be in decades since the purchase. 
So we have one decade here. So we'll just check what that um, depreciation rate was in this first decade. Um, and so we see that it decreased in value. So you could look at what value it retained to come up with your growth factor. So I'm going to do that because we want to use our growth factor in our equation. So this is looking at its new, um, its new value over its original value. So if you take 24,000 divided by 40,000, we find out that this truck is 60% of its value after a decade. So this is the growth factor. That means it's decreasing by a rate of 40% each decade, okay? But it's retaining 60% of its value. Um, so we wanna write an expression for this. So the value in decades or after however many decades is equal to the initial amount, 40,000, times the growth factor, which is 0.6, it's retaining 60% every decade. So write an expression to represent the car's value after four years. Okay, so we're gonna be plugging in some time periods. So I'm just gonna write down the rest of this and then we'll figure out what we need to plug in for the time. Now this is four years, and remember that our time is in decades. So four years equals four tenths of a decade. So you can plug in four tenths to keep it simple if you want to, um, and just get four tenths here. You can also reduce this to a fraction of two fifths if you'd rather plug that in. By what factor is the value of the car changing each year? So remember that our factor is this 0.6. And so now we want to be thinking each year. Remember, this is each decade. So we want to think of how much is one year of a decade. Well, one year is one tenth of a decade. So then we'll do 0.6 to the one tenth power. And that gives us approximately um, 0.95. So that's for one year. So it's decreasing by about 5% each year. Number five, the value of a stock increases by 8% each year. Explain why the stock value does not increase by 80% each decade. So remember a decade is 10 years. So they're suggesting that you would do the growth rate times 10 um, to figure out what it is after a decade. But we know um, that this is going to be um, multiplication, okay? So this is, if we're increasing by 8%, okay, this is really a growth factor, factor meaning multiplication, um, of 1.08 or 108%. And then this is happening each year that we're multiplying by this factor, so we're multiplying by 1.8 10 times. So that's going to be 1.08 to the 10th power, not just 8 times 10. And so then does the value increase by more or less than 80% each decade? So we would need to take this 1.08 to the 10th power, which gives us um, a growth factor of about 2.16. So this means that our new amount is 216% of the original. Um, and then we want to um, subtract the original 100%, right? So this is actually 116% bigger each decade. Okay, so it has increased more than 80% because it's increased by 116% after 10 years. Number six, decide if each statement is true or false. So 50 to the one half power equals 25. That would mean that 25 times 25 would equal 50, and that is not true. Okay, 25 times 25 is 625, so this is not true. The square root of 30 is a solution to y squared equals 30. Well, square root of 30 times square root of 30 equals 30. So this is true. 
243 to the one third is equivalent to the cube root of 243. That's true. Square root of 20 is a solution to m to the fourth equals 20. No, because square root would solve x or m squared. So this is looking for a number times itself four times. And square root of 20 times square root of 20 is equal to 20. So square root of 20 times square root of 20 times square root of 20 times square root of 20 does not equal 20. So this would not be a solution. Number seven, Lynn is saving $300 per year in an account that pays 4.5% interest per year compounded annually. About how much money will she save um, after 20 years? So you learned um, at the end of unit two a formula for this. And this is going to be the sum of all of this is going to equal her annuity payment or how much she's putting in each year, her annual payment, times one minus the growth rate, okay, not just the interest rate, but this is the growth rate to the N divided by one minus the growth rate. So the interest rate is 4.5%. The growth rate is one plus that. Okay, so one plus 0 0.045. So this is going to be 1.045 is our R value for this situation. So we have S equals 300 times 1 minus 1.045. And then after 20 years, so our N is the time period, so 20 divided by 1 minus 1.045. So then you'll put this into your calculator. Um, and if you type that in correctly, you will get about nine nine thousand four hundred dollars So C.